Hello students, let us learn general science for class 8 from the book Science Square. Today we are going to learn chapter Crop Production and Management. In this chapter, we shall discuss about various agricultural practices, agricultural tools or implements, methods like sowing, using of manures and fertilizers, and about irrigational practices, weeds, harvesting, storage, and animal husbandry. Let us begin the chapter. Nomads. Till 10,000 BC, people were nomadic. They were wandering in groups from place to place in search of food and shelter. They ate raw fruits and vegetables and began hunting animals for food. Later, they could cultivate land and produce rice, wheat and other food crops. Thus, agriculture was born. Agriculture The science of farming is called agriculture. Farming includes cultivation of plants, rearing of animals for food and other beneficial items like wool, cotton, beverages, etc. We call these as agriculture. Agriculture is the main occupation of majority of people in India. Due to this, most of the people in India live in rural areas. Crops and its types When plants of the same kind are cultivated at one place on large scale, it is called a crop. Crops are of different types like cereals, vegetables, fruits. They can be classified based on the season in which they grow. The climatic conditions play an important role for the growth of the crops. The climatic conditions include temperature, humidity and rainfall. These climatic conditions vary from region to region. There are two broad cropping patterns namely carrot crops and prairie crops. Let us now read about carrot crops. The crops which are sown in the rainy season are called carrot crops. The rainy season in India is generally from June to September. Paddy, maize, soya bean, groundnut and cotton are carrot crops. Rice, corn, soya bean, sugar cane, groundnut, cotton are all carrot crops. Rabi crops. The crops grown in the winter season, that is from October to March, are called rabi crops. It includes wheat, gram, sea, pea, mustard, linseed, broccoli, almond, oats, also grown during summer. Basic practices of crop production. The various tasks which a farmer needs to do during cultivation of crops, we call that as a agricultural practices. The agricultural practices includes preparation of soil, sowing, adding manures and fertilizers, irrigation, protecting from weeds, harvesting, storage. So these are the Various agricultural practices which we are going to discuss separately. Let us first learn about preparation of soil. It is the first and the most important step before growing a crop. It is done by turning and loosening the soil which allows the roots to penetrate deep into the soil for breathing. The loosened soil also helps in the growth of earthworms and other microbes present in the soil. These organisms are friends of the farmer since they further turn and loosen the soil and add humus to it. But why the soil needs to be turned and loosened? Soil contains minerals, water, air and some living organisms and also while this process 
various nutrients in the dead organisms are released back into the soil. These nutrients are again absorbed by the plants. The diagram shows how the process of loosening and the turning of the soil takes place. The process of loosening and the turning of the soil is called tilling or ploughing. It is done by using ploughs. If the soil is very dry, it may need watering before ploughing. A ploughed field may have big clumps of soil, which are called crumbs. These crumbs are broken and leveled for sowing as well as for irrigation. Leveling of the soil is done with the help of a leveller. The picture shows the leveling of the soil. Manure is added to the soil before tilling to help in proper mixing of manure with the soil. Agricultural implements plough. Plough has been in use since ancient times for tilling the soil, adding fertilizers to the crop and removing the weeds and also in turning the soil. It is made up of wood or iron and is drawn by a pair of bulls or other animals. It contains a strong triangular iron strip called plow shaft. The main part of the plow is a long log of wood which is called plow shaft. There is a handle at one end of the shaft while the other end is attached to a beam. This is placed on the bull's neck. One pair of bulls and a man can easily operate the plough. These are being replaced by iron ploughs nowadays. The next agricultural implements is a hoe and a cultivator. Hoe is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. It has a long rod of wood or iron. A strong, broad and bent plate of iron is fixed to one of its end, which works as a blade. It is pulled by the animals. Today, plowing is done by the tractor-driven cultivator. The use of cultivator saves labor and time. Sowing before sowing, farmer needs to get a good quality of seeds. The quality must be clean and healthy and also of high yielding variety. They separate the healthy seeds and the damaged seeds by dropping them in water. The damaged seeds being lighter begins to float on the water. Let us now discuss which tools are being used for sowing. Sowing methods. The tool used traditionally for sowing seeds is shaped like a funnel. The seeds are filled into the funnel, passes through two or three pipes having sharp ends. These ends pierce into the soil and place seeds there. Nowadays, the seed drill is being used for sowing with the help of tractors. This sow the seeds uniformly at equal distance and depth to ensure that the seed gets covered by the soil and is protected from being eaten by the birds. It also avoids overcrowding of the plant. So we say seed drilling is a, have a good advantage. The seed drill also helps the plants to get sufficient sunlight, nutrients and water from the soil. Sometimes, a few plants have to be removed to prevent overcrowding to save the time and labor. Manures The substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called manures and fertilizers. Soil supplies mineral nutrients to the crop plants which are essential for the growth of the plants. In some areas, 
commerce grow crop after crop in the same field. In this way, the field is never left uncultivated or fallow. Continuous cultivation of crops makes the soil poor in nutrients. Therefore, farmers have to add manures to the fields to replenish the soil with nutrients. This process is called manuring. The manure is an organic substance which is obtained from the decomposition of plants or animal waste. Farmers dump plant and animal waste in pits at open places and allow it to decompose by microbes. The decomposed matter is used as organic manure. Improper or insufficient manuring results in weak plants. Fertilizers. Fertilizers or chemicals produced in the factories which are rich in a particular nutrient. It includes urea, ammonium sulfate, supersulfate, superphosphate, potash, NPK that is nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. The use of fertilizers have helped the farmers to get better yielding of crops. But Excessive use of fertilizers will reduce the fertility of the soil and also become a source of water pollution. Therefore, we have to replace fertilizers with organic manure and leave the clay uncultivated in between two crops. This helps the soil to replenish with the nutrients and improves the texture. Crop Rotation. The process of replenishing the soil with the nutrients can take place through crop rotation. This can be done by growing different crops alternately. Earlier, farmers in the North India used to grow legumes or fodder in one season and wheat in the next season. This helps in the replenishment of the soil with the nitrogen. This is because the rhizobium bacteria present in the nodules of the roots of the leguminous plants helps to fix the atmospheric nitrogen, which is very important for the growth of the plant. Let us now differentiate fertilizers and manures. Fertilizer is an artificial chemical, whereas manure is a natural substance and is organic. Fertilizer is prepared in the factories while the manures are prepared in the fields. Fertilizer does not provide any humus to the soil while manures provides a lot of humus to the soil. Fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients NPK while manures are less rich in plant nutrients. But in spite of its less Availability of the nutrients, it is advantageous. The organic manure is considered better than fertilizers because it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil, it makes the soil porous due to which exchange of gases becomes easy, it increases the number of friendly microbes, it improves the soil texture. Irrigation. The supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation. The time and the frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop, soil to soil and season to season. In summer, the frequency of watering is higher due to increased rate of evaporation of water from the soil and the leaves. Water is important for proper growth and development. Water is absorbed by the plant roots along with the water, minerals and fertilizers. Nutrients dissolved in water are transported to each part of the plant. The sources of water for irrigation includes wells, tube wells, ponds, lakes, rivers, dams and canals. Traditional methods of irrigation the water is available in wells, lakes and canals is lifted up by different methods in different regions of the place for taking it to the fields. The various traditional ways are moat that is pulley system, chain pump, day clay and rawhead. 
This is the Moet system, which we will call it as a pulley system. The picture shows the chain pump in which a wooden has been used. This is the Dekli system. And this is the Ahat system. It's a lever system. Modern methods of irrigation. Sprinkler system. This is done. This system is done on an uneven land where sufficient water is not available. The perpendicular pipes have rotating nozzles on the top or joined to the pipe, main pipeline at the regular intervals. When water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure with the help of a pump, it rotates. They get sprinkled with the water on the crop as if it is raining. The second method is a drip system. In this system, the water falls drop by drop directly near the roofs. It is the best technique for watering fruit plants, gardens and also trees. Water is not at all wasted in this drip system and we say it is a boon in the regions where availability of water is poor. Weeds the undesirable plants which grow naturally along with the crop are known as weeds. The removal of weeds is called weeding. Weeding is necessary since it requires compete with the crop plants for its water, nutrients, space and light. Thus, they affect the growth of the crop. Some weeds interfere even in harvesting and may be poisonous for animals and human beings. Control of weeds. Farmers adopt many ways to remove weeds and control their growth such as tilling before sowing, physical removal of weeds by uprooting, cutting them close to the ground from time to time with the help of kurpi and or using of seed drill. We can even control the weeds by using chemicals like weedy sites like 2,4-D. These are sprayed in the fields to kill the weeds. The weedicides are diluted with water to the extent required and it is sprayed with a sprayer to the fields. It is sprayed during the vegetative growth of the weeds before flowering and seed formation. The spraying of weedicides may affect the health of the farmers and hence they should use these chemicals very carefully by covering their nose and the mouth with a piece of cloth during spraying. Harvesting the cutting of crop after it is mature is called harvesting. In harvesting, crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground. It usually takes 3 to 4 months for a cereal crop to mature. It is done either by sickle or by the machine called harvester. This is a harvester. In the harvested crop, the grain seeds need to be separated from the chaff. This process is called threshing. This is carried out with the help of a machine called combine, which is in fact a harvester as well as a thresher. Farmers with small holdings of land do the separation of the graph and chaff by winnowing. Storage Harvested grains have more moisture. If freshly harvested grains are stored without drying, they may get spoiled or attacked by the organisms. This makes them unfit for use or for germination. Therefore, before storing, the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture. This prevents the attack by the insects, pests, bacteria and fungus. Farmers store grains in the store jute bags or metallic bins. However, large-scale storage of grains is done in silos and granaries to protect them from pests like rat and insects. Dried neem leaves are also used for storing food grains at home. For storing large quantities of grain in big gudan, specific chemical treatments are required to protect them from pests and microorganisms.
animal husbandry. Like plants, animals also provide us with different kinds of food. Many people living in the coastal areas consume fish as a major part of their diet. We have just seen that the process of crop production involves a number of steps like selection of seeds, sowing, etc. Similarly, animals are also rare at home or in farms to have provided with proper food, shelter and care. When this is done on a large scale, we call it as an animal husbandry. Let us have a chapter recap. Same kind of plants cultivated at a place constitute a crop. There are two types of crops, rabi and carrot. It is necessary to prepare soil by tilling and leavening, by using ploughs and leverers respectively. Sowing of seeds at proper appropriate depths and the distances gives good yield. Soil needs replenishment and enrichment through the use of organic manures and fertilizers. Supply of water to crops at appropriate intervals is called irrigation. Weeding involves removal of unwanted and uncultivated plants called weeds. Harvesting is a cutting of the mature crop manually or by machines. Separation of the grains from the chaff is called threshing. Proper storage of grains is necessary to protect them from pests and our microorganisms. Food is obtained from the animals from which animals are rare. This is called animal husbandry. This ends the chapter.